Use this picmonic to learn the key facts about blood transfusion administration by the story of the blood transfusion IV responding to a collapsed apartment building where people need blood, a critical step before a blood transfusion that can prevent potentially life-threatening reactions is proper patient identification, shown by matching the patient's ID to the order. Next, the IV bag reaches for a large bore needle, representing that a large bore needle must be used when administering blood to prevent lysis of blood cells. Special tubing, called Y-tubing, shown by the Y-tube flushing, is used when administering blood products. This type of tubing contains a filter and allows for saline flushing. However, prior to administration of blood products, a set of baseline vital signs, shown by the baseline vitals machine, should be obtained. This allows for detection of changes in the patient's condition that could indicate a transfusion reaction. Under normal circumstances, blood products should be administered via slow IV infusion, shown by the snail IV infuser. After transfusion has begun, the patient should be continually monitored during the first 15 minutes or while the first 50 milliliters of blood is being infused depicted as the monitor holding a 15-minute timer and 50 cent with a blood bag. This is because transfusion reactions are likely to occur within the first 15 minutes of the transfusion, so be sure to monitor for reactions, shown by the monitor at the site of a reaction, which includes changes in vital signs, the development of a fever, or signs of fluid overload. Do not add anything to the same IV line, shown by the IV bag not allowing anything to be added. No dextrose or lactated ringers, shown by the no sugar rose or lactating rings, should be used during a blood transfusion in the Y-tubing setup, only normal saline. Lastly, due to religious beliefs, administration of blood products may not be acceptable to some patients, such as Jehovah's Witnesses who cannot receive transfusions, shown by the Jehovah's Witness refusing the transfusion IV. So in summary, blood transfusion administration involves several key steps. Proper patient identification must be initiated, a large bore needle along with Y-tubing should be used, and a set of baseline vital signs should be obtained. Administer blood products via slow IV infusion, monitor the patient during the first 15 minutes or 50 milliliters of blood, and monitor for reactions. Do not add anything to the same IV line, no dextrose or lactated ringers should be used, and Jehovah's Witness may not accept transfusions. Everything you need to know about blood transfusion administration can be recalled with this collapsed apartment building. People are trapped inside and in need of blood, so the transfusion IV responds. It's easy. For the rest of the story, check out Picmonic.com and sign up for a free account. There, you can also take Picmonic's quiz. The quiz automatically sets up your daily quiz by using space repetition algorithms based on the questions you've missed or struggled with. To make sure you study what you need, when you need to. And while you're there, check out the rest of the hematological system picmonics. We have a huge selection of the content you need to remember. So go ahead and see how hundreds of thousands of students like yourself have figured out how to save time and have fun doing it so that you can lock in everything you need to know forever. Play, quiz, and spaced repetition. Efficient, effective, and research proven to increase exam scores. Then, since it doesn't want to clot up while squeezing inside, it uses Y-tubing and connects saline to help flush the blood through. The transfusion IV makes it inside and finds one patient already being treated. His baseline vitals are taken, and a snail infuses the blood very slowly. This structure is...